ASTM F1959 and IEC 61482-1-1 are fabric tests to determine the arc rating of a fabric or fabric system. These tests provide an ATPV, an EBT, or a limiting value called ELIM or Energy Limit in IEC, or an arc rating limit in ASTM. Both standards are based on the electric arc cage design developed at Connectrix High Current Lab in Toronto, Canada. Connectrix has been the leading international arc test lab since 1992. Both standards use vertical electrode assembly, which is stabilized with a modified Faraday cage. The origin of the test was overhead line incidents in which clothing ignited. The ASTM F18 committee researched the incidents with several electric power generation, transmission, and distribution companies and developed tests for ignition probability and PPE protection. Over time, the PPE protection became the focus because when clothing ignites or melts, it often is a main contributor to injury. In these test standards, the vertical electrodes are 305 millimeters or 12 inches apart, allowing for the arc to cover a larger area of the PPE in contrast to IEC 61482-1-2, the box test, which uses a 2.5 centimeter arc, exposing less area to the full energy of the infrared and convection from the arc itself. Three panels are positioned around the arc and spaced 305 millimeters away from the arc. Beside each of these panels are two incident energy calorimeters. These two exposed sensors measure the energy in the arc, which means the specific test configurations are accounted for in each test. It provides more information than an assumption incident energy based on a test setup like the box test. The test begins by placing the fabric on each panel held in place by springed insulated holders to prevent easy shrinkage, but to allow some shrinkage to simulate real fabric behavior. Then the electrodes are fused with a very thin copper wire to allow initiation of the arc. The power system to power this arc must have a minimum X over R ratio to sustain the arc. This also provides an initial spike in asymmetrical current, simulating a higher current initial arc flash, which can occur on electrical systems. The panels are exposed to a predetermined amount of energy to check for crossing the Stoll curve criteria. The Stoll curve predicts the onset of second degree burn, and most flash fire, firefighters gear, and arc flash gear use the Stoll curve to predict a survivable burn level acceptable in testing. This does not mean that a worker will receive a second degree burn at the arc rating. It means that this is the maximum the standards have agreed to allow. In real life, workers rarely receive burns at an arc rating of the fabric for many reasons, such as worker movement, clothing construction, geometry of the body versus the flat panel in the test, and the focused nature of electric arcs. Also, it, it depends on the geometry of the specific arc flash the worker is exposed to and the conservative nature of arc flash calculations. For more insight into the pre-ablation burn concept, see our other video on pre-ablation burn or the double hump phenomenon. Next, a total of 20 minimum panels are exposed at higher and or lower energies than the initial exposure to fill in the data for the logistic regression. On two layered systems, there are more steps to account for how a system really behaves. In the late 2000s, two researchers at Connectrix discovered that some two layered systems did not add up to as much protection as expected in the test. One system was expected to produce a 40 calorie arc rating, but instead produced a 28 calorie arc rating. The reason over time began to be called the double hump or preablative burn. These systems are typically a heavy layer over a lighter layer. It's common in jacket designs or with a coverall over top of a shirt system. The old theory was that two layers would always provide more protection than either of the single layers. But in some cases, when the first layer is either heavier or less susceptible to ablation, now ablation is when the outer shell of a fabric breaks open and carries away energy from the layer under it. This is a common means of protection systems uh, provided in arc flash, just like layering paint was once used to carry away plasma energy in early versions of the space shuttle. One of the key terms to understand relating to flame, arc flash, or thermal testing is the Stoll curve. This predictive curve was developed for predicting skin burn to protect astronauts after a serious incident in the space program. The units used in the Stoll research was a calorie per centimeter squared. 
This was a common international unit at the time, and the size is convenient in the standard explaining a second-degree burn. Historically, this has explained that a second-degree burn occurs if a common cigarette lighter is exposed to the hand for one second. This would be expected to produce a second-degree skin burn, and it would be in the range of about 1.2 calories per centimeter squared for that second. The beginning point of that 30-second stole burn curve is 1.2 calories per centimeter squared. Second-degree burns are considered survivable, especially if they're on a limited part of the body, and arc flash burns rarely cover greater than 25% of the body unless clothing is ignited and it spreads the original focused arc flash to areas of the body other than those exposed during the arc exposure. Arc ratings come in four different types. The earliest rating was called ATPV, or arc thermal performance value. This rating is the 50% probability of the fabric crossing the stole curve criteria in the flat panel form. It's tested in the area slightly above the arc plane and directly in the arc plane. This is commonly called the 50% probability of second degree burn, but this is a misstatement for several reasons. The stole criteria itself is the probability of the onset of a second degree burn. Number two, the stole criteria was performed with an infrared lamp on fabric, but with no flame and without any of the convection associated with an electric arc. The exposure was also over a much longer period of time, and skin can take much more total energy in a quick exposure to show burn. This is why the U.S. standard for arc flash burn threshold for exposed skin is 2 calories per centimeter squared and is used in the OSHA 1910-269 standard as opposed to the 1.2 calories per centimeter squared used in the stole curve. So the number is a bit more conservative on the outset. Thirdly, the arc flash typically only hits 25% of the body and thus only rarely can cause more than 25% body burn even if the fabric is overrated, which occurs in very few real life scenarios. In the fourth place, the arc rating testing is a function of current and all arc ratings are done at 8,000 amps. A higher current test of fabrics tends to produce better results. One study shows that at 16,000 amps, two fabrics studied doubled their protective value. Any arc gap will also often produce even higher protective values. So clothing worn on a real body with areas that don't touch the body, like the legs of trousers, will typically provide from a one to a four calorie per centimeter squared better protection in testing. So arc rating, while not perfect, has been shown to be generally conservative in developing worker protection. The second type of arc rating is called an EBT. This is the energy break open threshold. This value is the 50% probability of the fabric, again, hung across a flat panel to have a 2.5 centimeter crack or a hole that's of that approximate size. This value does not indicate any crossing the stole curve, but it does expose a small area of the panel and would be expected to do the same on a worker. So again, it becomes the limit of the fabric or the arc rating. Two other terms, ELIM in IEC 61482-1-1 standard and arc rating limit or ARLIM in ASTM F2178 and being proposed for 1959 are limited arc ratings. ELIM is an arc rating chosen by the manufacturer, which is conservatively below the ATPV or the EBT. Sometimes it is chosen to be more protective to meet the EU laws on burns, and sometimes it's just more repeatable number for interlab comparisons or allowances for fabric variability. The AR limit is similar, but with even more conservative parameters in some cases. It's used in hood rating testing to limit the top of the test standard setup of 100 calories per centimeter squared. And it's also used to limit hoods that have a fabric rating that is below what the hood can perform at. This prevents needless testing of hood systems, which is also more conservative than the fabrics used in the design. Common videos of tests will use two or three cameras to allow observation of all three test panels and produce the video in an easier format to watch. The video allows the ability to observe the after flame time, which is limited in single layer testing and measured in all testing. Long after flame times can indicate a flammability issue with a fabric, a fiber, or a dye, or it may be a small flaming due to oxygen or superheating in high-level arc blast tests. 
Garment evaluations are often used as a better predictor of any of the hazardous after flame as the test lab can assess if the flames could enter into the worker breathing zone or if they're limited to the surface of a jacket or a hood and would pose no thermal hazard to a worker. Arc ratings matched to IEEE 1584 continue to be a reasonable means to engineer protection for possible exposures for workers when potential exposure cannot be removed, such as in equipment operation, earthing, or testing and troubleshooting.